Hello guys, today I'm going to explain about the topic predictive analytics. Let's go into the topic. Those who are watching for the first time, please like, share and subscribe my channel guys. Uh, first, uh, let me explain you what is meant by predictive analytics. So what is meant by predictive analytics? Any idea about the predictive analytics guys? So it is nothing but uh, the use of the data or statistical algorithms and machine learning techniques. I'm going to use a lot of historical data and I'm using a lot of computations and calculations on that data and uh, many machine learning techniques like um, prediction, classification, clustering, uh, all these techniques I'm going to use to identify the likelihood of future outcomes. What are the future events and happenings uh, that I want to find out uh, based upon the historical data. Based upon the large and the historical data, I want to find out in future how the events will happen. That is called as predictive analytics. So what is the goal behind this uh, means uh, what has happened to provide a best assessment of what will happen in the future. So what is the use of this? Suppose if you take the Amazon, Amazon is having a lot of customers and lot of products uh, uh, are there in that uh, Amazon uh, inventory. So what they, uh, they use it to do, they use it to identify how the sales are for a particular product. If you take one mobile phone, they will try to find out how the sales were there uh, in the last three years and they want to know how that particular sales will be there in the upcoming next two years or one year. So in the same way, they use it to identify about the product or they use it to identify the region based sales or they will try to identify how the uh, profit is there uh, in the how we can expect the profit in the next upcoming years. So in the same way, if you take the COVID scenario also, they, they will be having, they use it to analyze based upon the past historical data. Is there. So if we are having, suppose in the March month, we are having a lot of uh, uh, cases, active cases are there means. Uh, um, they use it to predict that in the next year, same in the March month, they use it to predict that we will get the highest number of cases. So like that, uh, they use it to predict based upon the past and the historical data. All the predictions were done uh, for the COVID uh, at that period also. So this predictive analytics, it will help us. Not only this Amazon, you, you can assume that Netflix uh, or uh, Spotify, LinkedIn, many of the uh, very big uh, e-commerce applications, uh, YouTube applications, they use it to have these uh, predictive analytics as an example for uh, identifying the future events in the market. So next uh, we will see that uh, what are the usages of the predictive analytics. So can we identify what are the usage of the predictive analytics. First one is the recommendation engines. What is meant by recommendation engines? What is meant by recommendation engines? Uh, recommendation engines uh, these are nothing but uh, uh, these are similar to those used in the Netflix and uh, Amazon. Uh, uh, where they used to have some past purchases and they can predict the buying habits of the customers uh, and uh, to recommend the new purchases. So I told you now in the Netflix and the Amazon, uh, they will try to use the, they will try to use the, all these types of uh, recommendation engines. They will be identifying what are the um, desires of the customers and accordingly they use it to, they use it to recommend the customers uh, that uh, these are the products uh, which uh, you can purchase. These are the products where you can like these products. Uh. So like that, uh, if you are seeing some movies in the Amazon, let's assume that you, you like a uh, horror movies. Uh. So what they use it to do. So if you are seeing the horror movies means down also it will show the recommendation. Uh, in the recommendations, it will show you the some horror movies only. So like that, uh, this uh, Netflix and Amazon uh, are many biggest companies. They are going to completely depend on these uh, recommendation engines itself. Next one is the risk engines. What about these risk engines? Uh, these risk engines uh, usually uh, we are going to use for the very biggest areas uh, uh, like uh, market and the credit risk. Uh, we are having the market risk, uh, credit risks are there, catastrophic risk. Uh, and uh, portfolio risk and portfolio risk. So these uh, risk engines we are going to use in all the business areas. Uh, what is meant by market risk? What is meant by market risk means? Uh, suppose uh, let's assume that uh, we are having a uh, uh, lot of products in the market. Uh, but uh, if you want to launch one a new product means we can't assume that whether how this 
whether this product will click or else it will go down in the market or or else uh, some few things may happen if you are launching anything in the first pay, first time in the market means so we need to identify what type of risks will be there for a product to be launched in the early stages then uh, credit risk what is that credit risk many people will be there who will be buying their products with the help of some credit cards or uh, something else or what happens they use it to they will be having that and credit problems for the customers uh, who if they are unable to buy um, if they are unable to pay the amount on time means again uh, we will we have to face the credit risk and the uh, catastrophic risk means completely uh, complete damage will be there uh, and to their business uh, that is called as the catastrophic risk and uh, portfolio risk means uh, uh, where this portfolio risk means uh, we are having some problems in, in uh, investing uh, uh, the money financially in the market such types of uh, risks are called as the portfolio risks so and the third one is the innovation engines what about these innovation engines means here uh, uh, innovation engines uh, will help us uh, for identifying the new product innovations uh, if you see that uh, during the COVID period, uh, we are having a lot of drug discoveries are there. Uh, they, each and every company they are running behind uh, to launch some new COVID medicines in terms of serums, in terms of uh, um, is that we can call it like capsules or uh, tablets uh, or pills, whatever it may be. So they use they are hurry in developing some new products. Uh, so that uh, uh, if it clicks means each and every person who are uh, staying in our India use it to purchase lot we will get a lot of benefit uh, of uh, all these things and uh, consumer and the, we can go for the consumer and the fashion brands uh, to predict uh, uh, or to identify what are the new formulations and uh, discoveries are there. So in that way these uh, innovation engines also will help us and uh, new product innovations uh, drug discoveries are there and the customer and the fashion brands are there right next one is the customer insight uh, engines which will integrate the wide varieties of the customer related information so here if you take the customer insight engines means uh, uh, come from come from the customer point of view we can identify the sentiment behavior we can identify the emotions right uh, sentiment behavior means if you take the twitter or youtube or uh, facebook or instagram uh, you will be get uh, suppose if you are posting a video what will happen you will get lot of positive comments lot of negative comments so identifying that means they are expressing their own emotions uh, with the help of some few text words or uh, uh, some few messages so that is called as sentiment behavior i want to identify the sentimental analysis of the customers or uh, the people who how they are going to react for a particular video right that is called as a, we are trying to identify the emotions whether the positive comments negative comments or neutral comments or no comments so i have to classify the people based upon those comments and uh, advertisement targeting uh, advertisement targeting means here uh, uh, see what i will do uh, previously it is the case like if you want to give any sort of advertisements means uh, uh, we have to prepare some pamphlets we have to uh, identify few persons uh, and uh, we will be making them to roam the entire uh, the city or other states also to marketize or to advertise our uh, products but now that is not the case we are having lot of uh, um, stuff is there uh, inside the internet where we can go for the digital marketing and we can explore our products and we can give uh, just one simple pop-up videos in the while browsing in the internet in the google means on a few web pages means automatically it will get clicked and it will knows to the millions of users and the customers here so that's how they used to go for the advertisement targeting so like uh, if you take the flip card what the flip card will do usually they will go for one rupee sales uh, or they will go for the diwali sales yoga the sales uh, and uh, christmas sale the uh, summer sales uh, winter sales a uh, lot many things they will do so and uh, they used to attract the customers in such a way and uh, next one is the customer loyalty programs so they use it to prefer for the uh, lot many customer loyalty programs what are those customer loyalty programs means uh, uh, first thing is uh, they use it to uh, get first uh, the trust from the customers so for that uh, they use it to send usually um, a lot of good products uh, with good revenue and good market uh, okay so usually the people will be trusting the amazon why because amazon is having a uh, lot of trust uh, 
of all the customers also so uh, they use it to purchase the very good products and uh, usually that amazon also they use it to keep the uh, very good products in the inventory also so we use it to have some uh, customer loyalty programs so they use it to analyze and they use to keep based upon the customer uh, um, interests and uh, optimizing the market uh, we need to op optimize the markets and uh, uh, identify how the trends are going on uh, based upon the customers and uh, they use it to launch the products according to the customer interest so today the person who is going to buy the uh, oppo phone or uh, what is that uh, samsung phone uh, they use it to maybe he in the next upcoming year uh, he can go for the oneplus phone or some other else uh, where we, if we are going to launch the new products means they will purchase but if you are still staying in the reliance or uh, nokia type of information means what will happen will stay there itself but the people needs the updations and innovations in the market so in that way we need to optimize the market find out what are the new trends what are the new updations so if anything something new means they use it to purchase the customers are like that even uh, that is the case of the marketing and uh, campaigns for the revenue lift so if you want to lift your revenue or uh, marketing type of things means uh, we used to go for a lot of campaigns so campaigns means uh, just like i told you now previously we used to hire some persons and uh, uh, we used to do the campaigning with the help of some speakers and lot many things uh, but now it is not the case there is no need of going anywhere by sitting inside uh, in our house and by using some social media also we can go for the campaigning just for uh, uplifting our revenue in the market so we are having lot of optimization engines are there uh, uh, where these optimization engines uh, they use it to optimize the complex and uh, interrelated operations and uh, decisions and if any complex decisions are there uh, that means how to seek the natural sources to maximize the output uh, while reducing the operational cost so how all these things will uh, happen here uh, so we can i can use the optimization in just that means with less amount of uh, these things i use it to get uh, more revenue so usually the business people they will be th thinking uh, in their mind in that uh, uh, measures only and uh, we use it to have lot many political related issues economic related issues and competitive pressures will be there and uh, along with that internal and uh, external pressures also will be there but still we use it to um, optimize the engines here uh, and uh, next one is the SaaS BI. What is this SaaS BI means? So the software industry, they have been successfully, uh, they have excelled in the game of the SaaS BI. That is the software as a service industry such as Salesforce.com. The basic principle is uh, to make it easy for the companies to gain access to the solutions without the headache of uh, uh, building and maintaining their own on-site implementations. That means uh, uh, they want to go for... Uh, they want to easily use the solutions which was provided by the market. Suppose if you take the Salesforce as an example, already it is a built-in, a very good built-in application where they have uh, given everything in, inside that Salesforce. If you are having any problem, usually I can use it uh, without having any headaches and uh, um, instead of going for the own uh, implementation from the scratch, I can use such type of applications without having any headaches like that. So when you add up the costs of the people and the technology, SaaS is very less expensive. If you go for the SaaS means it is very less expensive in terms of people and the technology. And uh, the solutions are typically sold by the vendors. So how the solutions will be sold? Uh, uh, if you take Power BI, that is one type of solution for the analysis and reporting. And if you take Salesforce, that is also one type of example. If you take AWS, that is one type of solution for using the cloud resources. All these things are completely sold by the vendors on a subscription or a pay as you go basis instead of more traditional software licensing model. If you go for the traditional software, definitely we have to go for the license issues and we will get the lot many license issues here. But if you take a uh, such type of your the or uh, Amazon AWS cloud or uh, if you take the Salesforce, uh, we need to have some subscription and uh, pay on go basis model will be taken here. And uh, it is a very good choice when the organizations face the budget issues uh, uh, to buy the BI software and the related hardware. Suppose if you are facing any sort of budget issues means uh, uh, to purchase such type of business intelligence software and the uh, related hardware, then in such cases we can go for. Uh, these type of vendors for purchasing 
because there are not any upper front purchase cost or additional stuffing requirements needed to manage the BI system. There is no need of any uh, purchasing additional cost is not needed and additional staff is also not needed uh, to manage your entire BI system here. But here uh, the total cost of ownership may be lower than uh, with on-premise software. The total entire cost of the ownership, it is always less compared to the on-premise software. That means if you want to build your own software, means it will cost much rather than if you are purchasing uh, these things. Why? Because that is already built-in application where uh, it was developed by someone and just we are using that particular application. That's it. And uh, another common buying factor for the SaaS is the immediate access to the talent here. And especially in the world of information management and uh, business intelligence and predictive analytics in almost all the applications now, um, predictive analytics will work. So that's why about um, predictive analytics guys, uh, from the point of view of uh, examinations and from the orally textbook, uh, they gave only these points and accordingly I have framed my PPTs also. Hope you like this video guys uh, and uh, thank you for watching guys. Thank you.